tons of people are freaking out and asking me my thoughts on the rumored pricing for the 5080 and 5090. We're seeing headlines of a $1,500 plus 5080 MSRP, and maybe the 5090 costing over $2,600. And so I'm fighting through the remnants of my flu to get you my thoughts on this information because I don't think you need to panic quite yet for a number of reasons. First of all, when we're talking about leaks for graphics cards before launch, uh, the ones that we should be the most skeptical of are the ones talking about pricing for a wide variety of reasons. And second of all, just with any leaks and rumors, you want to evaluate the sources and it's totally fun and, uh, you know, uh, it's part of the fun, the hype of the release cycle and everything to get into these and think about what we think about it. I know some people get just annoyed by leak and rumor videos anyway. Well, I mean, just th don't watch them then. I think these are fun, uh, but again, you have to look into sources and all of that to get an idea over whether any of this is worth panicking over. So where's this $2,600 uh, headline coming from? And then we'll get into the $1,500 plus uh, 5081. So the $2,600 for the 5090 is coming off of uh, the basically 19,000 yuan listed in this image. And then the 5080 pricing listed here would be a thousand. And that's a lot. That's significantly more than the 4080. And you're like, but it, and it's in this picture. So it must be real, right? Well, where did this picture come from? That's what you have to go through uh, when thinking about these types of, of sources. Now, this looks like it's coming from WXNOD on Twitter. Uh, now, again, though, you can tell that this is a cropped bit of a larger image. So where is that image coming from? So it looks like it's coming from uh, this video, because we have here, we have 94G8LA uh, uh, saying that this is just conjecture. So I followed up and I took a look at this uh, YouTube video where this image seems to be cropped from. And I don't speak Chinese. However, uh, if I rely on the auto-translated uh, captions, the, and, and I watched throughout this whole video, this whole video seems like it's basically a two minute long uh, recap on the leaks and rumors. Uh, you know, it's the kind of video that I do basically, all, you know, a little shorter and more straight to the point, I guess. But it's, it's a latest leaks and rumors graphics card video in the Chinese language. And so this is clearly based on leaks, rumors, and speculation. And notice that they're saying the expected price here. That's the translation. And when you look at the context of this entire video, again, I'm not a native language speaker to this, but based on what I can tell off the captioning and just how the whole video seems to be, again, this all seems to be just uh, a, a leak and rumor roundup type of thing. Uh, notice also that this, this channel, I don't know anything about it, but we're looking at seven and a half thousand subscribers. Not that it necessarily means anything, um, but I, in other words, this doesn't seem to be some kind of like massive channel which, with, with its, its own major sources with a proven track record, at least as far as I can tell. But again, not my language sphere. Maybe I'm missing something. So if you're in the comment section and you know more about this particular channel, their sources, their... Uh, track record, that type of thing. <coughs> um, excuse me, still fighting through the flu. Um, th then maybe we could we could learn a little more about that. But everything I can see in the context of this is that th this is just speculation. That's just speculation. Okay, neat. So if it's speculation, we can all speculate that man, that would really suck if that was the actual pricing. And could it end up being the actual pricing? Sure. But is this particular headline like a we know this for sure type of thing. Absolutely not. Now, before that, a day or two before that, we were also seeing these headlines about a $1,500 plus MSRP for the RTX 5080. Now, when you follow up the source for these, it seems to be crediting Vex on YouTube. And so I went ahead and watched the entire YouTube video here from Vex. And Vex seems to be very clear on what his source is. Uh, his source seems to be somebody contacted him on Discord and is claiming to be somebody who works at a PC retailer in Australia and took a uh, photo of an inventory screen. And this inventory screen shows the price the store pays and then the uh, you know price that they're supposed to sell it at. In, in this column, 
on a variety of graphics cards. These look to be um, 5080s uh, that are an Asus Prime Edition. Now, there's a lot of things going on here because you have to deal with the fact that it's Australian dollars, there's taxes included. Um, conversion into US dollars uh, doesn't necessarily mean that that's gonna be a US MSRP because oftentimes the Australian market just has different and oftentimes worse pricing for everything anyway. Um, there's all sorts of reasons why even if this is a legitimate source, it's hard to say what that would mean about the actual like MSRP in US dollars. Also because if this is not an MSRP model card, uh, that could also be changing um, you know, there's cards that cost hundreds of dollars more than the MSRP base models, if that makes sense. So maybe NVIDIA's Founders Edition is only $1,000, but uh, Asus decides to make cards that cost $500 more than that because maybe there's a, a huge gap between the 5080 and the 5090. So you have uh, a large uh, uh, b bunch of, you know, wiggle room in there to charge massively more for fancy coolers and things like that. So there's all of that on top of the fact that the source could just be wrong, either either like intentionally lying or, uh, you know, so, so you have to get into that source. And right here, remember the source here isn't Vex. Vex is publicizing the, the source's information. His source is somebody who contacted him on Discord and Vex says in the video that he has no reason to not believe him, but that's also not the same thing as having any reason to believe him. In other words, when you're evaluating sources of GPU leaks, rumors, etc., oftentimes the only thing you have to go off of is their previous track record. Meaning if this is the first time a source is making a particular claim to have some kind of information, then that means that um, you have no way to weigh that against their, their previous claims and did they pan out. Does that make sense? Also, I have no idea what this person's, uh, you know, again, assuming this even is legitimate, um, you know, I don't really know what their internal system looks like and would, would they actually know the correct pricing at this time anyway. Um, I don't claim to have a whole bunch of my own like internal sources and whatnot, but I get the general impression that within the uh, supply chain right now, even at board partners and things like that, uh, exact MSRPs are not exactly known. And I don't wanna get any more specific than that. And I'm also not gonna double down on being like super confident on that and that being exactly up to the date as of this minute. But I'll also say that this, that, that kind of seems to be the, the general case with GPU launches is that the pricing can be very up in the air uh, up until the very last second um, when it's officially announced. Uh, even sometimes once things are officially announced, they end up getting changed. <laughs> we saw that with like uh, NVIDIA even unlaunching their original plan for a 12 gigabyte 4080, which they ended up unlaunching, renaming, and then reducing the price on. We've seen things like AMD with their launch of the 7600 XT version, and I think even the original 7600, uh, where during the review process, uh, they had told reviewers the price, reviewers had made their reviews and their recommendations based on that price, and then during that review process, like literally days before the publication date, uh, having them change their mind about the pricing. Right? So in other words, I think that any pricing information that we're seeing right now should be taken at most as like an interesting thing to speculate about, but not as gospel on this is exactly what it's gonna cost. Because again, even if all these numbers are legitimate within the store at this point, could they be changed up until release? Could they, um, like I said, could these be not MSRP models? Could the actual MSRP models be significantly lower? There's all of those things to consider. Now, that being said, does that mean that, uh, <laughs> that the GPUs won't cost this much? I mean, I'm a little bit scared of what NVIDIA might choose to do here because NVIDIA's in a, in a weird position now where they make so much money off the data center stuff their profit margins are huge there, that while obviously they don't wanna give up a large market in gaming, like it makes sense to wanna keep a huge market share, they have the dominant market share position there, so giving that up doesn't really make sense. Um, it's also uh, weird for them to sell things at a much smaller profit margin than what they could do selling that those same materials, uh, you, you know, uh, directed more towards data center, bringing down their 
overall, you know, gross margins on product for the business as a whole, uh, selling things um, without a massive, ridiculous markup. So, NVIDIA is kind of in that weird position there. And like, like it or not, co companies aren't your friend. They're there to make money. Like they have a legal obligation to maximize profit for shareholders in their decision making. So, um, uh, and that's all of your favorite companies, not NVIDIA. <laughs> okay, that's why having some kind of... Uh, feeling like any sort of brand in particular is your friend or you need to defend them doesn't make any sense at all. They're all there to make maximum profit as a legal obligation. So anyway, um, that's what I've got to say about that. So yes, the latest rumored pricing does look absolutely awful, but I would leave it at that. It's rumored pricing and I wouldn't read way too much into how, uh, how solid any of that is. Now I will say though that that like Asus Prime branding does seem to be corroborated by some other leakers. Uh, however, uh, again, like we're saying, hey, we're seeing this one listed at zero dollars, right? So, uh, hey, maybe we can get the uh, the, the uh, Astral ROG. Uh, uh, let's oh wait this yeah this is the ROG Astral 5080 for zero dollars right now. In other words, there's also this like is some of this just place placeholder pricing right <laughs> uh, at this point. So I wanted to bring that up as well, where those those brands being thrown out there uh, in that leak from Vex do, do seem to be showing up in other places, indicating that it might not just be some random Photoshop just completely made up. Uh, so again, leading some credence to that. Um, but again, um, placeholder pricing, question mark, uh, all of those things. Now, uh, that also, along with these leaks, this one's coming from Momomo US, uh, we are seeing uh, more confirmation of these models, but also more confirmation that the RX 9070 XT naming scheme is going to be a real thing. And it's also looking like, based on the models that we're seeing here, that it is going to be NVIDIA leading with the 80 class, the 5080. We're seeing a lot more 5080 stuff coming out right now than we are 5090 stuff. So it's looking like that is going to be the lead card for this uh, this initial launch. And it is looking more and more like AMD is gonna be combating that with a 9070 XT and a 9070. And the latest uh, information on that is that they do appear to both be 16 gigabyte graphics cards. Now 16 gigabytes is, is, is I think a lot, it's, it's good. It's nothing to be super concerned about. Um, if a 5080 ends up costing anything like $1,500, it would be really nice if they would have clamshelled that and given you 32 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, but, you, you know, <laughs> the 9070 XT is, uh, you know, talking about pricing numbers, I don't think we really know. But um, any kinds of, uh, you know, loose rumors or expectations we saw in this were much more like uh, in that $600 or less type range, in which case 16 gigabytes of VRAM seems way more uh, <laughs> uh, reasonable and something to be happy with uh, than you would be if you're paying well over a thousand dollars. Anyway, so there's that. And the last things I'll uh, leave you with are some quick notes where the latest rumors on the 9070 series is that it will not force the use of a 12 volt two by six power connector. So uh, models will be free to use uh, the more traditional eight bit, uh, eight pin power connectors if they would like. And then also we have uh, Intel rumored to be launching a Battle Mage GPU model with 24 gigabytes of memory uh, by sometime in 2025, targeting productivity markets. Now, does that necessarily mean they're launching a high-end Battle Mage GPU? Because that's what a lot of people seem interested in, seeing how aggressively priced the B580 was. I think a lot of people are like, ooh, but I just want something a bit more powerful. So I haven't seen any solid information that, it, that Intel will definitely be coming with a more powerful battle mage for gaming. However, launching something like a B580 with double the VRAM capacity uh, to give it um, more use cases in productivity markets is certainly something that sounds reasonable and that is the latest rumor on all of this. But again, that's rumors. It's not uh, completely official information or anything like that. I think that would be interesting in certain productivity applications. The uh, just simply the fact that it's not CUDA um, could uh, you know limit its its uses a bit. But the the um, Intel support on a lot of stuff is good enough 
that coming with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, if it was at an attractive enough price, certainly would, I think, interest a lot of people. But I don't think this would likely be a great value gaming product, given that uh, if it was like a B580 that was basically clamshell memory or something like that, I just don't think you're at the power levels where going past 12 gigabytes of VRAM is useful or makes any sense for gaming. Whereas in certain um, productivity workloads, that might be a lot more interesting. All that, that, all right, that's what I've got for you guys today. Sorry if I'm still fighting through a little bit of a brain fog and cough and, and whatnot from the uh, tail end of this flu. It is getting better slowly each day. So hopefully next time I, I, I get you guys a video, I will be 100% myself. But anyway, hopefully this was still useful and or interesting, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.